Okay, so first of all, welcome to this admission talk for our Bachelor of Psychology program. I'm Janet Xiao, I'm the head of the Department of Psychology at University of Hong Kong. And I would like to start this talk by telling you about what psychology is. So psychology, by definition, is the scientific study of mind and behavior, or more specifically, we're interested in how our mind works and what causes our behavior. And there are a lot of interesting questions that you can ask about the study of mind behavior, such as how do we learn to recognize faces, especially nowadays when everyone around us, they are all wearing masks. And how do we learn a second language, a pretty important issue in Hong Kong. And why does it seem to be more difficult um, than learning the first language? And how does insomnia affect our cognition? And how do we sometimes feel depressed um, or feel difficult to concentrate when we didn't get a good night of sleep? How do we learn the concept of numbers? And why do some people learn math faster than other people? So these are the in interesting questions about mind behavior that we want to study in psychology. And to study these questions, we have to study psychology as a science. So we need to learn how to take a scientific approach to studying mind and behavior. So in other words, we will have to learn about related research methods. We need to learn how to measure mind and behavior. And we need to recruit participants and perform data collection. And once we have this data, we need to learn how to perform statistical analysis. And once we have the results, we need to engage critical thinking and we need to present our argumentation. So traditionally, um, subfields in psychology will correspond to different cognitive capacities with the continu continuity of methodology. For example, in social psychology, we are interested in mind and behavior related to social interaction. In cognitive psychology, we're interested in mind and behavior, um, the, the fundamental principles underlying mind and behavior. And developmental psychology, we are interested in the developmental changes in mind and behavior. However, in more recent years, there's a new trend in the study of mind and behavior. So people recognize that um, different cognitive capacities can be studied at different levels of organization. For example, we can study mind and behavior at the group and individual behavior level, or we can study the relevant brain systems underlying this mind and behavior, and, or we can study the neural networks within a brain system to, in, to understand the information processing mechanisms. And to do this, sometimes we also need to use different technologies or tools. So it, as you can see from this um, introduction, then you will see that the study in psychology really requires interdisciplinary efforts. So for example, we can use eye tracking, uh, eye tracking techniques to see uh, where people attend to when they are performing a cognitive task as a way to understand the type of information processing strategy people will engage. Or we can use EEG to record to major brain waves when participants are doing a particular cognitive task to understand the neural mechanisms underlying mind and behavior. Or we can use computational modeling to summarize a person's behavior or to simulate human behavior so that we have better understanding of the underlying computational mechanism um, for human behavior. So now you know about what psychology is, then the next, the next question to ask is why psychology? Why is it important to study psychology? One important reason is many of the challenges in our society require understanding of human mind and behavior. For example, related to issues of aging population, we may want to know how aging will affect our mind and behavior and whether there are ways to promote healthy aging. Or for issues related to learning, especially in this technological world, 
We may want to know how we acquire new skills and knowledge and whether they are ways to facilitate learning, whether they, uh, whether they are ways to facilitate learning in particular in those with special educational needs. Can we use technology to help them? And there are also issues related to promoting mental health. So we may want to know what causes depression, what are there ways to detect suicidal tendencies and provide intervention. So in other words, there's an urgent need in psychology and mental health professions in our society. And that's why it's important to study psychology. So now you know why it is important to study psychology. Then the next question to ask is why we should study psychology at Hong Kong U. There are a lot of good reasons. For example, we are the first psychology department established in Hong Kong at the university level. And we are the first and only department that offers multidisciplinary programs in cognitive science and neuroscience. And we are also one of the only two departments in Hong Kong that offer professional training in both clinical psychology and educational psychology. And we are the best psychology department in Asia, according to the latest Times Higher Education World University rankings. And most importantly, we are innovative and up to date. And that's why today we want to introduce to you our brand new um, Bachelor of Psychology program. So in this program, we emphasize on three key features. First, hands-on experience. Second, research intensive training. And third, multidisciplinary approaches. And we, will, we aim to provide a wide range of disciplinary courses to achieve these aims, to reflect these key features, including, for example, experiential learning projects, and advanced quantitative methods in psychology, and also interdisciplinary thesis, where students' thesis will, the students' thesis will be supervised by two co-supervisors. And our aim is to provide holistic training in psychology. And at the same time, we will retain the flexibility for students to pursue a second major or a minor in other disciplines. We also aim to provide clear pathways to professional psychology careers, such as clinical and educational psychology and uh, mental health related training, such as counseling or advanced research training, such as in cognitive science and neuroscience. So here shows our program structure. As you can see here, in addition to um, the university requirements, such as language requirements and the common core course requirements. In this program, students are expected to take 84 credits for courses to declare a major in psychology. So for, um, for the major requirements, we have first, uh, students will, will take introductory courses and some other core courses in psychology. Um, to get a broader knowledge of course subfields in psychology, including developmental psychology, personality, social psychology, biological psychology, and cognitive psychological perception. So in addition to these introductory courses and uh, the core courses in psychology, we also have courses related to statistics and research methods to provide training in statistical skills and research methods and to, in to um, enhance students' abilities in critical analysis, reasoning, and self-reflection. And we also have uh, a wide range of disciplinary electives to allow students to, to specialize in one or some subfields in psychology. Just to give you some examples, so for example, we have courses related to um, introduction to psychopathology, introduction to counseling and therapeutic psychology, educational psychology, health psychology, human neuropsychology, fun foundations of cognitive science, foundations of neuroscience and research internships where students will have opportunity to do internship in the research lab led by one of our faculty members. In addition to all these, 
um, in typically in the final year of student study, um, there will be courses related to capstone experience. So this is a really uh, important opportunity for students to apply what they have learned in class to a real life problem. So to fulfill this capstone experience requirement, um, there are two options. Option one is that students can choose to take one advanced lab course in which they will learn uh, more advanced knowledge and skills to develop a research project and plus one experiential learning project where they can implement um, their, their project ideas, um, typically maybe related to knowledge exchange projects, knowledge exchange, knowledge exchange activities, or work community volunteering experiences. Or for students who are more research oriented, they can choose to do a, year, a one year long empirical research project from one of the following options, including independent study in psychology, thesis in psychology, or inter interdisciplinary thesis in psychology, where their thesis will be supervised by two co-supervisors. In addition to all these major requirements, our faculty, the Faculty of Social Sciences, also has requirements on social innovation and global citizenship. So for social innovation, students will have opportunities to, to really work and learn in the professional world and local communities through internship experiences. And our faculty has a long list of community partners, as you can see here. So these are very important to give students hands-on experience in the community. And the other requirement is global citizenship where students will have opportunities to gain international experience through international exchange with overseas universities or some other similar international programs. And again, our faculty has a long list of global uh, partners, including a long international exchange partners, including several prestigious universities across the world. Okay, so in addition to these faculty requirements, students will still have 78 credits um, to allow them to explore in other fields. So this will provide flexibility to our students to explore academic interests by declaring second major or minors or will take free electives in a wide variety of disciplines across all faculties at the university. For example, students may consider to take a, a second major or a minor in these programs offered by the Department of Psychology, including cognitive science, neuroscience, and human resource management. In cognitive science, in addition to psychology, then students will be introduced to, uh, will have the freedom to take some courses related to mind and behavior in other departments, including um, in addition to psychology, there will be linguistics, philosophy, and computer science. And if you are interested in neuroscience, there will also be courses that you can take. If you are taking the neuroscience program, there will be courses that you can take that will combine basic science with more specialized courses in neuroscience and psychology. And if you are considering the human resource management program, then you will have opportunities to take courses offered by the business school and politics and social work in addition to psychology. And here it just shows a suggested study pathway um, in our program. So the expectation is that during the first year, you probably, in addition to the common core course requirements and the language courses, these are the university requirements, then typically students will be taking introductory courses in psychology, and then they will also have some freedom to explore some other majors or minor or some free electives. And starting from the second year, then students will be taking the core courses in our program. And then they can also study to think about to opportunities to engage in, in social innovation or global citizenship activities. And year three, students will be taking more advanced, advanced core courses and uh, or elective courses. 
And in year four, the students will mainly be focusing on the capstone experience. Okay, so um, that you know about our programs and you may be curious about after all this, so what do um, psychology grad graduates do after they graduate from our program? And the answer is a lot of things because psychology graduates are equipped with both technical and soft skills that different industries are looking for. So they could go for a diverse type of jobs and industries in both private and public sectors, as well as education institutions. I'm oh, sorry, is this someone trying to ask a question? Well, that's not the case, okay? You will be taking two years as normal students, okay? Maybe a little bit. Okay, we will have opportunities to ask questions at the end of the presentation. So I will keep going first. Okay, so we're talking about um, what do psychology graduates do? And just to show you some statistics um, conducted by the university. So um, in the academic year of 2020, according to the survey, um, we found that among our psychology graduates, 73% are already employed and 24% uh, will go for further studies. So we only have a very, very low percentage of students who will still be um, seeking a full-time job. And then some of them will immigrate or will return to their home country. So we are very proud of our high employment rate. And among our psychology graduates, um, typically they will be employed most of them, a majority of them will be employed in educational institutions, and some will be in commerce and industry sector, and some will be in community social and personal services, and a small percentage will be in civil service. And these are some example of job titles that our psychology graduates will have to give you a sense about a, a, a big variety of job options, including, so for example, they could be training consultants, human resource officers, sales managers, marketing manager, research assistants, um, public relation executives, behavioral therapists. So this is really a large variety of job types, job options for our psychology graduates. So after um, knowing about so many exciting learning opportunities in our program, and then you may be curious about our entrance requirements. So I will pass this to our demonstrator, Justin Ao, to tell you more about our entrance requirements. So Justin. Hello, can you hear me clearly? Yes. Great. Okay. So following on, I will talk about the entrance requirement of our program. So what is the entrance requirement? So for Jupiter's application, we will be looking for the best five amount category A or C subjects. M1 and M2 will be recognized as a full elective on the condition that one of the elective subjects must be a category A subject. So potential candidates may be interviewed for the admission and admission only to band A applicants. So please make sure that you are putting us as your band A choice. Okay, make B site 6705 as band A choice. So how about for non jupus applicants? So for non jupus applicants, the expected lower boundary for B site admission is for reference only, okay? So for IB, we expect 34 or above. If you are doing GCE A level, we expect at least two A and one B, and it excludes English and Chinese languages. It may vary from year to year, but it is never lower than the university entrance requirement. So please note that um, since our program is brand new, 
and we do not have previous data on the previous entries requirement. So all these are the expected lower boundaries. So for more information, you may refer to our faculty's website, our department's website, as well as the university's admission website. So this is it for the admission requirement. 